Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. Well, I just picked up a new game, Mr. Run and Jump from Atari. Now this is um, actually sold, I guess, by Atari, which is, is really interesting uh, nowadays. Like you, for, for me to actually say I, I bought an Atari, like a brand new Atari 2600 game. Um, and you know, they, they have a few out. They've been re-releasing some of the classic titles as well. Um, you know, when, when the Atari 2600 Plus came out, uh, they, they started releasing some other Atari games, some collector's edition versions and all that other stuff. But this is interesting that they, they released a game uh, which is completely original. It, it's not ported from another system. It wasn't on their old system before. Um, from, from what I understand, I, I think there's a version of this on the Atari VCS, the new VCS that they came out with. I'm not 100% on that one. I don't really know too much about the VCS. I haven't looked too much into it, actually. I, I probably should. Um, but anyways, yeah, so... And it, and it kind of made me think, you know... Um, like, this isn't obviously original in a sense that nobody's ever made new stuff. I mean, we have Audacity Games making games like Circus Convoy. And, uh, you know, they just released another game. And uh, Casey's Gold is going to be coming out at some point. Um, so, you know, we always had that. And, of course, for the Intellivision, we, we have all these, you know, we, we do have a lot of, like, products like Minor 2049er, Homebrew, uh, you know, DK Arcade, and, um, you know, my Napoleonic Wars game that came out. Uh, so, obviously, you know, the Homebrew scene is, is uh, going strong to, to a point. And what I was tr trying to, th like, really thinking about was the difference between um, how they made games in the past, like the concepts and, and what they made in the past and today. And is it harder to conceptualize an, a new game versus today than it was back in the day? And I'm, and I'm talking back in the day, like the early uh, 80s, late 70s, uh, when they first started making games for the Atari 2600 or for the Odyssey or for whatever system back in that time, uh, the Intellivision, creators, the companies and all that, they, they had to get creative because they didn't really have anything to look at in the past. Um, I mean, we had pinball machines and we had Pong, but uh, they didn't have really anything to to look back and say, hey, you know, I really like that game. So I'm going to make a game similar. You know, we, we have that now. We can do that today. I can make a game like, you know, my Napoleonic Wars, for instance. I can make this game thinking about how, how they've made previous games. Um, or, you know, I could do a direct port of a game, uh, much like my Keystone Cops game, uh, where I, I just do a direct port. But if, if I think, hey, I want to come up with something original, um, today, I have to kind of think what's already been done, what's been done to death. I mean, there's been a lot of games like Pac-Man, like when Pac-Man came out, obviously a ton of clones, and I played a lot of them. I played them on Commodore 64. I played them on almost every system. There's always a Pac-Dot-Gobbling clone, even games like Lock and Chase. So there was a lot of inspiration that they, they, they were able to draw, you can draw from. Uh, especially today, we got games going all the way back, all through the whole spectrum of gaming, all the consoles, we got the Sega, we got, you know, Master System, Genesis, we had the Dreamcast, I mean, come on, we had hundreds of games to go through, thousands of games, well, hundreds, thousands and thousands of games that we can kind of cross-reference and say, hey, I, I want to make a game like, you know, insert game title here, Back then, they didn't have that, and um, you know you really have to you really have to think about the uh, ingenuity that they had to go um, like something like Burger Time, for instance. Somebody had to think about that. Someone had to th create a a concept of hey, how about hamburgers? And you have to like make them fall down a level, and then they have to you know assemble a hamburger at the. Someone had to come up with that concept because. It was never done before that. There, that's not copying, it's to, to my knowledge, it's not copying any game that existed prior to it. Now, obviously, during the arcade days, when, when they were building these games at Atari, um, I'm sure they communicated with each other, and, and they looked at each other's work, and they were like, oh, you know, 
um, and, and any other competitors that might have started popping up in the day. Um, and they probably were cross-referencing and, and looking, but really they didn't have too much to look back at. Um, you know, so they, they really had to get creative. I was watching the, um, what was it? The, uh, it was, it was a special on Netflix about video games and they were talking, I think it was how games were made or something. And they were talking about Donkey Kong. I think it was the games that make made America. I think it was that some, something like that. Anyways, they, they were talking about, you know, doing a thing about the Donkey Kong when, uh, when the, the original creators created the game and, and how they originally wanted it to be a Popeye game. And they started constructing this concept of, of you know, Brutus or Bluto, whatever his character, the character's name is, and Popeye being the, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the character and then having to save olive oil. And they constructed this concept. And then, obviously, through licensing issues and all the other stuff, they ended up making it something different. And they created Donkey Kong. And they created the girders. They created, you know, same concept. But they had to put that together because that they didn't just simply copy a game that already existed of course we had the midsection where we started to get games like congo bongo and you know other other titles that that started to represent or to look i should say like those games or play similar to those games and they had it you know they had it pretty good they could they could say okay let's look at what was made but then even then they still had to push the envelope uh, as the technology got better, um, you know, the Nintendo 64, for instance, now we got the, you know, they started getting into more of the three-dimensional graphics and uh, things started to advance. And then they had to start changing the games around. They, they couldn't just simply stick with the with the standard, you know, people aren't going to play dot-gobbling games uh, when, when you got a machine like the N64. I mean, yeah, there there was a mixed Pac-Man one or whatever it was where it was three-dimensional, but for the most part, they had to start innovating and creating new games. And of course, we had the PC time where a lot of PC games were happening. Uh, games like Doom set the stage for a lot of other dungeon crawler style games, or maybe not just Doom, but, um, you know, there, there was a few games before it, I should say. Um... And then the RPG games, of course, they, they started to pop up. Uh, people started to like those type of games like Ultima and, uh, you know, Dragon Quest and all that. Those other fun style games. But again, they started to look at what was done and they were able to kind of create their own and make it their own. But uh, as I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth in the timeline here. But in the, you know, present time... When you go to make a game, and I, and I kind of find this right now, I'm, you know, I've been saying to myself, and and, and to everybody, I, I want to make something original. I want to make a new game for the Intellivision, you know, like, like this one, Napoleonic Wars. It's not a hundred percent original because it's based off of a board game, but it is. It's not a a clone of a game that existed before, so you know that was great. But I I just would like to come up with something completely unique but then it's like okay well what do i want to do do i want to look at what's been done do i want to try and piggyback off of another game um for instance one game that i'm working on i showed a little snippet of it in one of my uh i think it was it's in, ended up in one of my shorts the uh and i mean youtube shorts not the shorts i put on um it ended up there i think because it was a short video but it was um a I guess you could say a port of Aqua Venture for, for the Atari 2600, which was a game that was a prototype for the longest time, and then it finally got released on the flashback system. Uh, I believe you can buy the cart now from Atari. Um, but I started working on that, and then I thought, well, you know, a direct port's just going to be boring. I need to do something to this game. And so I started to conceptualize and say, okay, it's going to play similar to Aqua Venture. But it's not going to be exact. It's going to have, you know, in several different trenches. You're going to have to find items. You're going to have to unlock cases or treasure chests. You're going to have to, um, you can upgrade your equipment. So it's going to be a much bigger, more robust game. You have bombs. You can blow up the walls and go through it. You know, so that type of idea and just kind of expanding and making this into my own adventure game, that'll play similar to the Aqua Venture game. 
it'll just have a heck of a lot more going on. So, you know, that's, that's kind of one way to do it. Uh, I would still like to come up with my own original concept, but it's hard. It's like everything feels like it's been done, um, which is the opposite problem from when uh, the designers, developers, programmers in the, in, back in the day, sometimes it was always, it was all the same person, had to, had, you know, a full clean slate of, there's not a lot of stuff out there, let's get creative. And they, they didn't, they didn't have much choice. I mean, they had to come up with Qbert, they had to come up with, hey, let's make a pyramid, let's make a little guy that can go on the, uh, you know, they, they had to con conceptualize that. Um, centipede, you know, for instance, let's have these centipede things coming down. People had to think of that, and, and you know, they had, they didn't have a whole lot to work with, whereas today we do. We have a ton of things to work with, but now we have to be, well, how many times is this game going to exist, and, and this game? It's really, a, it's an interesting time we're in, and um, I hope I can come up with something new, but, you know, maybe sometimes it takes a help from the community to throw some ideas around. Anyways... Before I let you go, again, I'm showing my Napoleonic Wars because I do sell this game at my, on my website. If you're interested in it, uh, go check it out. I also sell signed copies if you're interested in that too. Anyways, let me know what you think. Throw some comments down below. Hope you subscribe. We'll talk to you later.